As you begin to learn machine learning, there are many things that you can read. Many books, blogs, articles online. It could be dis disorienting. For me, starting out, this book was a great help. Introduction to Machine Learning with Python, a guide for data scientists. So in this video, there's going to be just a quick glance at this book and how it helped me wrap my head around a lot of machine learning techniques with Python. Books are really special to learn from. You can have notes in them. I love taking books out and reading them in coffee shops. They also give you this physical um, indication of how much you've sort of read and how much you've completed. Even in machine learning, when it's the cutting edge stuff, when it's stuff that's new and uh, whenever I find a book that uh, is has a good collection of the concepts, either as a reference or as something that you read, I feel very blessed. And this book really came to my need when I needed to learn a lot of these, these techniques. Now, people come to machine learning from different uh, kinds of backgrounds. Uh, personally, I come from a software engineering, but somebody can come from like a statistics background or a, like a business and analytics uh, or marketing, let's say, uh, background. And so for me, having a book that explains a lot of, of techniques with accessible code examples, so right into the uh, specific libraries, it came at a, a level in my learning cycle that was extremely helpful when I wanted a little bit of depth. Now, the way I got into machine learning, I studied computer science, I've worked as a software engineer, but I didn't really work with AI or machine learning uh, very much. I've watched a couple of demos that I thought was, were very interesting. So the initial word lens demo was incredible. Um, I think this book right here, I read the first two, three chapters, that's Programming Collective Intelligence. Uh, it had something about recommenders. Um, that was extremely helpful uh, and insightful for me, but it wasn't really my intro to machine learning. I, I read that, I think, in 2011 uh, or 12. When uh, TensorFlow came out in 2015, I thought, okay, this is the time to jump into machine learning. And so my way was going through some of the early TensorFlow uh, tutorials, and these tended to be about convnets and computer vision and classification of which was pretty difficult and then uh, I had to read a little bit more about neural networks to get into machine learning but then something like this comes along and tells you that you know it's not all about neural nets it's not about uh, convnets um, there's a little bit of breadth that you need to build and it was extremely helpful uh, to do that for me personally so let's come in here and look at Introduction to Machine Learning with Python, a Guide for Data Scientists by Andreas Mueller and Sarah Guido. Let us look at the table of contents. So it's common to have a first chapter that runs you through the tooling. Um, and in, in the Python ecosystem, these are all the right tools. Maybe scikit-learn here. And they do have scikit-learn examples. Uh, but then you have NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, Pandas, and, and Jupyter Notebooks. And then they run you through a, a classification example uh, using Iris. Uh, it's a well-known data set. I personally find it a little, there are easier data sets to start with, um, but it's a good example nonetheless. And then you have the two main learning chapters. So you have supervised learning and unsupervised learning. So that's where the learning happens. And then there are the things that surround the learning process. So you have representing data, so how to do one-hot encoding, binning, feature selection, and then evaluating the models. So you have your cross-validation, uh, grid search, uh, and a look at various evaluation metrics. And then the pipelining, I think this is probably mostly in, in scikit-learn pipelines. And then just a brief intro to working with text data. Uh, these are mostly TF, IDF, and bag of words. So no transformers here. This book came out in like 2017. Uh, but these are all important to know. These are all like foundational uh, stuff. Even if you don't sort of go over it, to have a accessible uh, reference that you can go back to was, was very helpful in my case. So let's look at the methods. 
a, a common criticism of, of machine learning uh, curriculums or books is that they focus too much on the methods, uh, on the, alg the learning algorithms themselves. But to me, I find that to be important because it's difficult to think about, even though you spend most of your time working on the data, it's hard to think about working the data if you don't know what the the central sort of algorithms for learning are. And so knowing a few methods is, is a good introduction. Then you can spend a lot more time working or figuring out how to process uh, data, how to prepare it, and so on and so forth. So the initial example here starts with um, k-nearest neighbors. It's an accessible and uh, good method to, to start with. In the actual chapter for supervised learning, they go through uh, sample data sets, k-nearest neighbors, linear models, naive bays, decision trees, um, and then ensembles, and then this is neural networks. So this is not a book on neural networks. It does have a section on neural networks, but it will t teach you a lot about the other methods around it. And to me, so I spend a lot of time on neural nets, a lot of businesses and use cases can benefit from all the other machine learning. Uh, machine learning is not deep nets and neural nets. Um, there's tremendous benefit to learning a lot of these other methods, even for supervised learning. So there's unsupervised learning here, which is the uh, third chapter, and that is scaling, so pre-processing and scaling data, and then dimensionality reduction. So you have the main, you have PCA, principal component analysis, non-negative matrix factorization, and manifold learning with T-SNE. So these are all still very important methods and very useful if you have a thousand features um, all of these methods are able to shrink down the the number of, of let's say features that you have while capturing some you know the internal variability or some of the internal structures and patterns so you can graph them better so you can plot a two-dimensional plot of uh, let's say word embeddings so since this came out, probably UMAP would be something interesting to add um, or to learn after TSNE. But once you wrap your head around sort of how to use TSNE, UMAP is, is a natural extension. And then you have clustering. So clustering is also extremely powerful, very important methods. And they cover some of the main methods here. So k-means is the classic clustering method that you can find uh, a lot of uh, a lot of places. Agglomerative clustering is where you build a hierarchy. Uh, or this is called, also called hierarchical clustering. DB scan is the one that you don't need to specify the number of um, clusters to. Uh, so it's still widely in use, still very powerful. And then evaluation metrics of clustering. This was a quick rundown of, of the contents. Let me see where, what I have, you know, some of my notes on this book here. So I have... I sometimes leave these in some places where, so this is discussing ridge regression. And I have this note here on linear regression. And then I have a note here that says multi-class. So this is multi-class and classification. And you have some of your graphs here. So this would be a decision tree and how that does it. So it's all black and white. I don't know that O'Reilly prints a lot of books in in full color but that's always helpful i always aim to find books that have good visualizations and color and this is so this is the decision boundaries the downside of pca is that the two axes in the plot are often not very easy to interpret so yes we don't have labels for what each axis does after you reduce um, the faces data set uh, commonly used to showcase what, what PCA does and NMF as well. So, but I, I don't, but I don't think that they use that for NMF here. Oh, they do. Okay, yeah, I like this. So, this is a difference between PCA and NMF. So, PCA. So, this is the original image, and then you, they reduce it to let's say ten components. 50 components, 100, but then with NMF, the components that you break it down to tend to be, you know, these are like uh, of, of a forehead component, and this is a like a nose component, and this is like um, something else. So I like how potentially a bit more uh, interpretable.
done a little bit of work with them in, in Echo, the open source library I've, I've been working on. Um, what else? So these are incredible examples on, on clustering um, from data sets that show you different kinds of you know, scattering of, of data sets and how different cl clustering methods are able to tackle them uh, or not. This says trying to find the odd one out. This outlier detection, okay, this is through clustering, so with, with DB scan potentially. So this has been a quick look at Introduction to Machine Learning uh, with Python, a book that has benefited me tremendously. I'm hoping to do a bit more and share with you some of the other books that I've taken uh, a look at or that have helped me. Uh, but when I was uh, compiling the list, this was definitely the first one and the one that I benefited from personally the most. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.